Welcome to Twisted News, where we have some of the craziest true crime stories that are happening all around the world right now. Today, we start off with the story of a missing NFL player whose mom was found murdered out in Chicago, followed by the haunting cold case of Debbie Lynn Randall, which has a few strange ups and downs. Get ready for Scary Mysteries, Twisted News. Number one, missing NFL player. In Maywood, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago, the horrific discovery of 73-year-old Myrtle Brown shocked the community on September 16th. Her lifeless body was found near a creek behind her home, and that was only the beginning of a perplexing mystery that is still haunting the area right now. Myrtle, a vibrant woman known for her impeccable fashion sense, infectious energy, and love for dancing, was last seen by neighbors a few days before the discovery. Kevin Grayer, a nearby resident, finally remembered her as just a lovely lady, very soft-spoken, outgoing, always on the go. Her untimely death was a cruel and shocking event to those who knew her, especially because of the nature of her injuries. The Cook County Medical Examiner's Office confirmed that she had died from assault-related injuries and officially declared her death a homicide. Yet Myrtle's mysterious death wasn't the only baffling occurrence here. Her son, 35-year-old Sergio Brown, a former NFL player who once played for the New England Patriots, Colts, Jacksonville Jaguars, and Buffalo Bills, had mysteriously vanished. Sergio, a Notre Dame alumni, had transitioned from a football field to a more private life after seven NFL seasons. However, this sudden disappearance, closely coinciding with the tragic event of his mother's death, alarmed both his family and the authorities. Nick Brown, Sergio's brother, took to social media to plea for any information regarding Sergio's whereabouts. Heartbreakingly, he wrote on Instagram, My brother Sergio is still missing. If anyone knows where he is, I want him to know that I love you and please come home. As the investigation moves forward, the residential street in Maywood became a center of the investigation. News outlets captured the scene. A quiet street transformed into an area cordoned off with police tape, marking the tragic unfolding of events within. The family members, including Nick, urged the public to respect the ongoing investigation and refrain from approaching the property. During the authorities' search, a key piece of potential evidence emerged as neighbor Carlos Cortez shared that he had provided the police with footage from his ring doorbell. What exactly the footage contains remains undisclosed, but Cortez confirmed he last saw the Browns just a few days before the tragic discovery. It's all speculation at this point, but it's believed in all likelihood that some sort of robbery or attempted robbery turned bad occurred here, with the perpetrators converging on the home and killing Brown's mother before taking him with them. And what they did with him is yet to be seen. The grief-stricken family clings to hope and memories of their loved ones. Nick fondly reminisced about his final conversation with his mother and how she always had helpful words. He said, Mom always told me tough times don't last. And our last conversation about tough times being temporary is my beacon of hope. Number two, the haunting cold case of Debbie Lynn Randall. In the town of Marietta, Georgia, is a tragic story that has haunted the community for over five decades. A mystery that took 51 years to solve and brought to light the dark secrets that lurk even in the most unsuspecting places. On the evening of January 13th of 1972, nine-year-old Debbie was at a laundromat when the third grader decided to make her way home to her nearby family's apartment. Back then, it was typical for kids to be able to walk around freely, and plus, her house was barely even a block away. But this was a journey she would never get to complete. At around 8 p.m., her mother came into the store looking for her little girl, and the clerk told her that she had left about an hour ago. 
Her mom went outside where she found spilled laundry detergent in the parking lot, but no sign of her little girl. A huge search party ensued, and in fact, it was the largest of the time ever in the county. All eyes were on the lookout for the little girl, but there was nothing until 16 days later when a group of college kids spotted her body near the intersection of Windy Hill and Powers Ferry Road. She was wearing the same clothes as the day she disappeared. She had been assaulted and then strangled, and it appeared she had been killed on the same day she was taken. Despite their best efforts, Cobb County Police found themselves in a labyrinth of dead ends. Hundreds of leads came pouring in, each more confounding than the last until the case went cold, leaving behind a family in anguish and a town haunted by the ghost of an unresolved crime. And fast forward to 2017 when a timid voice emerged from the shadows of the past, holding a piece of the jigsaw puzzle that was missing all these years. Sandra, a quote-unquote street kid at the time of the crime, heard the case was being looked into again by her sister, who was a cop, and she decided to finally speak out. She was only 12 years old back in 1972, when she saw something that would haunt her for her lifetime. A man, a black pickup truck, a quick struggle, and little Debbie being forcefully taken outside that laundromat. Assuming he was a family member, Sandra thought Debbie was in trouble for something she had done wrong, and so she didn't think much of it. The revelation the next day, though, that the girl was missing turned her world upside down. Haunted by guilt and the weight of what she had witnessed, Sandra kept quiet, as if she had already let the girl down, so what was the point of telling anyone? But really, it was not until the advent of genetic genealogy that the specter of this mystery began to unravel. A circular piece of cloth found near Debbie's remains and stored for over four decades was sent to forensic experts in 2015. From that, they derived a partial DNA profile. And then in a twist of scientific marvel, further testing in a Florida lab in 2023 identified the phantom that had eluded capture for so long. It was Mableton resident William B. Rose. He was 24 at the time of the heinous act, and chillingly had taken his own life just two years after the crime. To the bafflement of investigators, there appeared to be no prior connection between Rose and Debbie. It was deduced to be a crime of opportunity, a young girl at the wrong place, and at the worst possible time. The revelation of this killer was bittersweet. The Cobb County community and the Randall family could finally find some semblance of closure. The wounds of the past still stung. Melvin Randall, Debbie's brother, summed up the feelings of many when he said, My family appreciates everything they've done. I wish my mother was here, but I know she knows in heaven that it's finally over. So there were two of the most strange and scary news stories that we have for you this week. Please subscribe and like and check out some more of our content if you enjoyed watching. And thank you for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one.